In this video, I'm going to be sharing my sixth week of tracking my YouTube stats and my analytics to see how my YouTube channel is growing as a small Gen X creator. Analytics have never really been my thing. Um, not a detailed person, but I realized that if I don't understand the numbers, if I don't understand how to read the data, analyze it and do something with it, then my chances of growing are slim, I think. I'm sure you can grow without understanding the analytics, but I want to give myself a head start. So if you're new here, hi, I'm Bev. I'm a 58 year old coach and trainer. I have ADHD and I've been trying to grow this channel now for over a year and it's a slow burn uh, but I've seen a bit of traction in the last couple of months so I've made the decision to really put the effort in now to being consistent and to learning exactly what I need to do so I want to share that with you today hopefully you'll get some value from this and understand a little bit more about the analytics and I'll share with you why I'm tracking the data that I am. So I'm going to pop over onto the computer now and let you see the numbers. And so I'm here in my YouTube analytics. And I have to say, when I first started looking at the analytics, this left me feeling a little bit sort of sweaty palmed because I don't really do numbers. What I've learned is to just, just find the data that I need for what I want. So First thing I, I do when I come into my channel analytics is to come up here to the top right hand corner and I just take the last seven days. So from the 5th to the 11th of September and I'll show you how that looks in my spreadsheet in a moment. So we've got various different areas. We've got this sort of initial uh, dashboard, if you like, for our analytics that gives us some data, tells me I got 3,302 views in the last seven days. Um, so there you go, 3.3K. Oh, go, get away. Keep getting these uh, pop-ups. 3.3K views, 87.4 hours of watch time and 25 new subscribers. So that's all looking good initially. You get the data in sort of various different formats. If you like visuals and you like graphs, then you can look at the graphs. I prefer numbers, even though I don't, I'm not, I, I am definitely a visual person, but I find in this case, I, I struggle a little bit with reading graphs. So it also gives you a sort of a percentage increase or decrease. And I'm very happy to see that my views have got a whopping 639% more this week than last week. Watch time 160% more and my subscribers up by 150% more. So that's absolutely brilliant. We go through each of these tabs. That's the sort of the overview. And there's other stuff down here that you can see, which is my top content. If I come to content, this is the bit that I'm always most interested in, really. This funnel I love because it gives me immediate data on how many impressions I've had. That's how many times my uh, videos or my thumbnails were shown by YouTube to people who might be interested. So that's suggesting that 51.7% of it came from YouTube recommending my content as opposed to me sort of pushing it out on socials, et cetera, and people finding it that way. Uh, I have a 2.8% click-through rate. It would be nice to get that up. Views from impressions, how many people sort of clicked on my thumbnail and viewed it. My average view duration, the length of time that somebody watches my videos is 5.22 and my watch time from impressions is 48.64. So that's all good data there. I can also come into the audience and see how many of my viewers are returning, how many are unique viewers. Uh, that's quite interesting. That would suggest that um, I'm, I'm getting in front of more people who've never seen me before. Just coming down, we can see I've, I've not had this all of the time. I think as I've got more consistent and I'm posting more, it's given YouTube more data to work with, but it's showing me the best times. And I think the darker, the purple, that shows when my viewers are most likely to be online. That gives me a bit of an indication of the best times to upload, if I'm honest. I don't really do that. I, I load, I upload as and when I'm ready and I don't really worry too much about the time. Maybe that's something I'll think about in future. If I come down here, 
I can see that 53.1% of watch time came from people who haven't even subscribed to me and 46.9% of people who have. So that would be nice to to tip the balance there. It's lovely to get new viewers, but if you are watching and you're enjoying what I put out there, why not subscribe? It doesn't cost you anything. It's not like a subscription service you have to pay for. It just means that if you subscribe, you get my content pushed to you. So you don't have to go looking for it, which is always good. Um, Some interesting data here as well around my audience, because I always assumed that I would appeal more to an older audience, but it would appear, thank you, it's my husband just bringing me a nice cup of tea. It would appear that actually a lot of my audience are in the sort of 25 to 45 age bracket, which just really surprises me. Quite a nice even spread there. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Interestingly, also, I thought my content would appeal more to females than males, but actually that's very closely on balance. That really does surprise me. So we've got lots of data that we can get from our analytics. Um, You can literally expand this even further. So if we just click see more, it will give you an even more granular look at each of your different bits of content. You can look at your traffic source, you know, where people are finding you. I'm not going into that much detail at this stage. I find it just a bit too overwhelming. So if I just flip over to my spreadsheet, I will show you what's going on. I'm not a fan of Excel or spreadsheets, but I am trying my level best to really get my head around understanding the numbers. So basically what I've done, I've put 20 weeks into my spreadsheet because that's how long I want to track my metrics for. Uh, Just to get into the habit of doing it, I'm sure I will continue once I've done 20 weeks, but I'm only going to be sharing 20 weeks worth. I've given myself 20 weeks because I feel as if that will give me plenty of time to see trends or patterns that might be forming. So I started on the 9th of August uh, at week one with a snapshot of my numbers from there. So I've actually had, uh, although we're on week six, I've had five weeks of data to, to kind of watch. The orange is where my numbers have gone down. The green is where they have gone up. And across the top here are the different bits of data that I'm uh, monitoring or tracking. So if I start over here with views, this is the number of views in total. You can see that my numbers have gone up massively this week. They did go down for the last three weeks. Now, somebody did tell me that August is notoriously slow on YouTube as people are away on summer holidays, etc. I don't know if that's what's happened here or if there were other things at play but it has shot up. And I leave a little comment. I always add a little comment looking at the percentage difference, which is what the little purple flag is in the corner. So if I just hover over there, that's actually a 620% increase in the number of views this week, which is wonderful. Uh, My watch time also has gone up and that's gone up by near enough 159%. That's how much time people have spent watching my videos. Uh, My average view duration has also gone up, which is nice to see. That's gone up by 15%. That's the amount of time that people are staying and watching my content. My click-through rate, that's how many people saw my thumbnail and chose to click on it, has gone up a little bit from 2.3 to 2.8, which is actually a a 21, nearly a 22% increase in click-through rate. My total subscribers have continued to grow. That's been fantastic. That's gone up week on week. Um, I'm now up to 876. I need to hit 1,000 before I'm eligible for the uh, YouTube Partner Program, but that's only half of the criteria. The other criteria is watch time, and I'll talk about that in a moment because there are some nuances with that. New subscribers this week, um, again, has gone up by 150%, which is lovely. So I've got an extra 25 subscribers there. And we still have this little anomaly here between the total number of subscribers and the new subscribers still seems to throw me every week. They never match. Um, Now, when I come across, I also 
have started tracking the traffic sources as to where my videos have been found. Uh, interestingly, all of these are down this week with showing up in suggested, that's YouTube suggesting what people should watch next. That's down by 70%. Uh, browse is down by 67.4%. And YouTube search, that is basically when I've perhaps tried to optimize my titles so that when people put in a YouTube search, um, a how to or whatever, uh, they're asking a question in the search bar, that's when your title or description, the keywords in there will potentially get picked up. And that is down as well by 70.1%. Now, this is a column I've added in this week, hence why I haven't got any other data, because this week I've seen a massive increase in the amount of traffic coming from shorts, and shorts haven't been something that I've been doing an awful lot of. I'm not a fan of short form content to watch, so I don't tend to want to create it, but I was just experimenting, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. I also realized this week that when I was looking at my impressions, I was missing a zero off the end. So I had 1,950 in my head, but it was actually 19,500. And I'd done that all the other weeks. So I've literally just got in this morning and added an extra zero onto all of these. But my impressions are also up this week by 63.83%. Now, when I talk about the, the number of views and the average view duration, etc. The second half of the eligibility criteria to get monetized and, and accepted onto the YouTube partner program is a thousand subscribers and 4,000 public watch hours on a rolling 365 day period. So for the last 365 days, my public watch hours up until the, the 6th of September was 1,550. However, if I look at my overall view time, it's much more than that because there are shorts that I've done in the past that have been watched as well. But that watch time doesn't get added to my public watch hours. This is just public watch hours from uh, normal YouTube videos, landscape videos, uh, longer form videos. And I wasn't tracking this beforehand because the the public watch hours takes a little bit of time to catch up. So it was always four or five days behind my sort of weekly stat, stats tracking. But I've decided to put it in here because it's quite difficult to know if I'm getting any, anywhere near the uh, watch time requirement if I'm not tracking that. So I get this from uh, the earn tab in YouTube Studio. So I'm back in my YouTube analytics and if I come down here to the earn tab, we can have a look and see where I'm at. So this shows you the eligibility for the first tier of monetization, but that's not being part of the YouTube Partner Program. That just allows you to access things like um, memberships and super chats, super thanks. And you need 500 subscribers, which I've reached, and 3,000 public watch hours, which I haven't reached, or 3 million shorts, which I'm never going to reach. <laughs> that just seems like a ludicrous amount. I know people do it, but it just seems too big for my head. But if I come down here, you can see we've got the eligibility for the partner program. So I need a thousand subscribers. I'm at 876. Yay. So I'm getting close. Um, but public watch hours, nowhere near, not even halfway yet. So this is really what I want to be building. Hopefully, by analyzing my data, I can see which content people are liking, which they're watching, uh, which content they're watching most, and hopefully do more of that to get that watch time up. So I'm not bothered really about the public short views. This is the reason I've started to track this number here, because although if you can see this is the, as at the 7th of September, it's actually the 12th of September today. It's not giving me completely up-to-date data 
And that's the reason why they carefully validate each channel's engagement metrics before they're displayed. It can take several days to complete and may vary from where you see elsewhere. So this is the accurate data, although it is a little bit out of date. It's not bang up to the moment. But this is the one I want to continue to track and hopefully reach this 4,000 watch hours. And my goal is to get there before the end of the year, whether I can or not. I mean, it's taken me well, this is the last 365 days. So it's taken me a year to get this many. And there's also the danger that if some of my earlier videos that I did about ADHD that got quite a few thousand views drop off, that number will go down. So if they're over a year old and the views drop off, that watch time is gone. So I have to make it up with new videos, which is slightly challenging and a little bit scary but we will get there. And if I don't make it by the end of the year, I will just keep plodding on and trying anyway. The more you watch, the more my watch hours go up. So you can help me there if you want to. And I'd be very, very grateful. And if you're not subscribed yet and you want to help me get to that thousand, click on the subscribe button be below. As I say, it doesn't cost anything and I'd be much, much obliged to you. I've also started tracking the number of pieces of content I've put out each week. So uh, this week I've put more content out than before because there's been more shorts in there. And I think that might explain all of the green across here. But yes, I, talking about my shorts, I don't create shorts from scratch. Um, all, I, all I've been doing is taking my long form videos and running them through a piece of software called Opus Clip. Sometimes they give you really great stuff. Other times it's not so good. So I, when I put a, say I put a 20 minute video into Opus Clip, I might get three or four if I'm lucky that I think are useful to, to use as shorts, as standalone shorts. Um, and this week I managed to get eight that I thought were worth sharing. Um, and they had some traction. So I think that's had a, a positive impact on some of my numbers. It's brought in a few new subscribers, which is from my understanding, if you're trying to grow your channel and you're not trying to grow it purely as a shorts channel, where using shorts can be helpful is actually introducing people to your channel and hoping, hopefully um, bringing them into the long form stuff and they might subscribe. And that seems to be working. I also did one live stream um, at the weekend and I plan to do another one on Saturday. So overall 12 pieces of content this week, um, but not all made from scratch. All righty, that's it for this week's analytics. I've done them as a standalone this week because I got some feedback that I thought was very useful saying, you know, some people just want the analytics. You put them with, in the past, I've been putting other tips and things for, for YouTube or sharing a bit of my, about my journey. Um, and the feedback was, you know, you've got two separate videos there. Why don't you separate them? So for this week, I'm just purely doing the analytics. If you want to see what's happened in the past and you want those tips, I'll put a link to my YouTube journey playlist at the end of this video. Thanks for watching. Good luck if you're trying to grow as well. We're all in this together. Let's have fun with it. And I will talk to you again very soon.